What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's about to be that time. Savage. Hey, everybody. Randy Troy here with a new theory series. Okay, I'm calling this Future Role. This is where I'm going to be taking a singular character, group, main character, straw hat, you name it, and basically talking about where they've been, where they've come from, what context clues in the story can tell us about where they're going, and sort of predict their future role. Now, either I'll be choosing it because I'm compelled to talk about them, but you guys also have the power in the comments to leave me a character that you'd like me to dissect. So when the video is done, be sure to do that. Today, we're gonna talk about Boa Hancock, very popular character, one of my wife's favorites. I'm excited to talk about this. The last time that we saw Boa Hancock was nearly two years ago, if not already two years ago. Chapter 956, big news. Big news. The Warlord system has been abolished. There is a fleet of Marines outside of Amazon Lily looking to apprehend Boa Hancock. Kobe is on one of those ships, and he has declared that he is on his way to capture the Pirate Empress Boa Hancock. Now, we end that chapter by going to Boa and having her reaffirm that the reason that she was even invited to become a warlord, a Shichibukai, is because of the Kuja pirate strength. Definitely not going down without a fight. But will she win? Nope. Let's talk about where Boa Hancock came from. Let's start at the very beginning of her character. We'll work our way back up, and then we'll get to where I believe the character will go. When Boa Hancock was a child, she was abducted from a Kuja ship and sold into slavery amongst the Celestial Dragons. Unfathomable, unspeakable things were done to her, Marigold, and Sandersonia. They were all fed devil fruits as a sick joke before Fisher Tiger freed them. He was their liberator. We were told that he scaled the red line and just freed everybody. Later on, we get more context on that and we learn the Fisher Tiger was also a slave that had managed to free himself and then unlocked a couple other gates on his way out. That's also my belief how some other fruits may have gotten out into the world, particularly the Opio no Mi, because within a year of that happening is when the deal happens for the Opio no Mi, lost flashback, etc. It's also in the same time frame that Luffy eats his fruit. When we're introduced to Boa Hancock in the actual canon of the story, when Luffy arrives at Amazon Lily, Boa is used as a vessel, a vehicle, to explain to us how terrible the Celestial Dragons are. And this is coming hot off of the heels of the archipelago, where Luffy has just recently punched a Celestial Dragon and picked a fight with the world. One of, if not the most important plot point of Hancock's entire character and something that is continuously harped upon in the Amazon Lily arc is that Boa Hancock once was a slave. On her back is the hoof of the soaring dragon. As we are introduced to Hancock in the canon, when Luffy arrives at Amazon Lily, he sees this mark. He protects Sandersonia and Marigold from having their marks exposed. He learns about the mark from Hancock, which then recontextualizes Hachi and many of the Arlong pirates, right? Eventually we learn more about the Sun Pirate's Mark, how it was changed and all of that. But for the time being, Hancock is showing us the true mark of the Celestial Dragons. One of her most important declarations in this arc is that she will never be controlled again. This is part of her dream. It's part of where she gets her strength. It's where she draws her power. Everything that she has accomplished to this point in her life is to never go back to where she was. After learning that Luffy has punched a Celestial Dragon, she becomes infatuated with him and helps him enter the most impenetrable prison in the entire world by hiding him in her coat. Later on, we go to the Marineford. She helps Luffy even more, but we still lose Ace. 
Following that, we go back to Amazon Lily. Luffy is recovering on her island after Law performs a surgery on him to bring him back to life after, you know, his bout with a Kainu, etc., etc. But what does this do? All this does is build a debt for Luffy. He owes Hancock for her hospitality, for her kindness, for the food that she provided. Right now, there is a fleet of marine ships looking to capture Hancock, exactly what she never wants to happen ever again. So story structure would allow one to believe that Hancock is going to get captured again. And not only will she get captured again, but she will return to becoming the property of the Celestial Dragons. Why? Because it will embolden Luffy to want to not only save her, to repay his debt to her, but it will also give us a reason, on top of many reasons, to go after the world government, to maybe put a certain story <laughs> plot point, Pirate King, on hold to save Hancock. Potentially Sabo, Vivi as well, if they're captured. Not entirely sold on those two, but Hancock, definitely. I think that a certain portion of the warlords are going to actually end up in Impel Down, but Hancock is going to go to Marijoa and become property once again. Now, how does this happen, right? Kobe's a good guy. He's not going to be the one to do it, but Kobe's not alone, and Kobe has to save face. He's a member of S.W.O.R.D. There are certain things that he probably doesn't necessarily want to get out, but if there is anybody that is going to take down Boa, I think it makes the most sense if it actually is Kobe to hype him up. And how could this happen? Well, one, maybe Kobe is not attracted to Boa, so he doesn't turn to stone. Or he knows how her power works, blindfolds himself, and fights her entirely using his advanced observation hockey, which has been harped upon the entire series since Marine Force. Considering how heavily Kobe's story is rooted in the corruption of the Marines with Shell's town, with Akainu, if Kobe is responsible for Hancock getting captured, and then he's able to see what the Marines and the world government do to Hancock, after maybe even having a conversation with Hancock about Luffy, that could be the final straw for Kobe to fully turn against the Marines and the world government. Kobe's been with us since Chapter 2. So it would make sense if Kobe has a massive feat in the story. And I think that taking down Hancock would be that feat. Now, a lot of people may have an issue with that, a qualm with that. One of the strongest characters, female-wise, in the series, getting fodderized or taken down, anything like that, is not going to sit well with a lot of people. But that's also the way that Oda writes women in most cases. So, I do not expect Hancock to get out of this. Now, there's also the possibility that the SSG are on those ships, and they have been hyped up, particularly even by Kaido in Chapter 985. The SSG are a threat. Now, me personally, I believe that they are either robots or enhanced marines that, like the Gifters, let's say the Gifters have bad smiles, the SSG have good smiles, similar to how the pacifistas are able to use paramecia versions of Kizaru's logia fruit. I believe that the rest of the SSG will also have paramecia style fruits of logias within the marines. So maybe we'll see, you know, like paramecia magma, paramecia ice, uh, different variations of other fruits that Vegapunk has successfully reproduced. This is the kind of stuff that could potentially overwhelm Hancock. But either way, she will return to the Celestial Dragons. And what if Charlos was actually her original captor, recontextualizing Sabadi Archipelago, and that punch that Luffy gives was actually more meaningful to Hancock than initially thought when we make it to Amazon Lily. Luffy actually being the person who punched her former captive, right? Then Luffy can save Hancock, and then, you know, what if Hancock finally gets the last laugh and is able to turn Charlos into stone? And let's get real dark, knocks him over, and he breaks into a bunch of pieces. <laughs> that part probably won't happen, but the stone part, sure. Nonetheless, 
there are things that are hyped up. Hancock's strength, and that she will not be controlled again. So, when you're manufacturing a story, you want to play things on their head. So, the audience is going to be shocked if Hancock's strength is tampered with. And we're going to feel something if Hancock is controlled. So, that's essentially where I see her character going. And that's going to wrap up our very first future role. If you like this, like I said at the beginning, comment who you would like to see in the next future role. And like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling the vibe. All right? I'll catch everybody next time. Savage. Savage.